All right, Jaws, we think that uh, it, right where your right hand is, if you push that cable out, uh, like outboard the stanchion, if you look at the, the little hook that is in line with the cable, right now the, the big part, the end of it, is kind of pointing out, out the stanchion. We actually need it to go the other way. So if you push the cable out, and it'll invert that hook. And then when we reinstall the connector, we want to make sure we don't pull back down on that. Does that make sense? Like it is now? Go a little bit to your right. We're talking about it. And for UV2, just a quick note, I think I have the bolt hand started. Okay, and we want exactly um, two turns on that. It's got, 10. Okay. And once you're good with the two turns, Laurel, you're going to be transferring the RET from that mounting bracket. Um, to the uh, low, pro or not the low profile truss cap, but the, uh, to the cap that you have installed. Happy. We've just reached three hours into today's spacewalk. So far, the trundle bearing assembly has been removed and Laurel has completed the greasing of the solar array rotary joint where she is preparing to install a new trundle bearing assembly. Hey. Um, I will remove the uh, rat and over to the cap. Yep, right over to the cap. Uh, and then after that, you're going to be retrieving the bearing package for JAWS. That's a good orientation, and we don't want to change that. So we, what we want to have you do is um, gently put a wire tie around the racetrack and around the cable so that when we install it, we don't pull it into the wrong orientation. Okay, Kathy. Since the start of today's spacewalk, NASA astronaut Jasmine McBelly has removed the H fixture in preparation for a future IROSA install, a rollout solar array. She also assisted with the trundle bearing assembly removal and is now securing a wire or a uh, ethernet cable to the space station. And Laurel, we see the uh, the ret on the cap, so we'll be getting the uh, bearing package, and we're going to engage the bearing package onto the mount. And again, my, minding that race ring that you uh, just beautifully greased. And Jaws, for you, uh, once we get done with this task, we're going to have you move back down um, to assist Laurel with the install. Okay, copy. Well, are you doing all right? How about you? Not yeah, good. Okay, the bearing package is installed. Copy, Jess.
And Laurel, we see you. And are you sure that the problem's not what the fuck it? Yeah, stand by one, Jaws, for Laurel. Uh, we, your go to, uh, now you've got that bearing package on. You can access your PGT, and we're going to be driving bolt number two. Copy. And Jaws, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just saying uh, the problem might be above it, but I'll try to get it to stay. As you can see, Laurel O'Hara is using the pistol grip tool. She will drive three bolts to securely fasten the new trundle bearing assembly to the solar array rotary joint. Again, these pieces are what help the solar arrays turn as they track the sun and store power for the International Space Station. As it gets pulled forward or outboard from the cable on top. Yeah, copy, we see that. Do you have any other suggestions if uh, the intent is to get that uh, flipped 180 and not having, not pulling hard on that tether point? Is there anything else you could see that could help? Can I undo and redo this front hook? Is that really? Yeah. All right, Jaz, yes, you are go to unhook and rehook that. For Laurel, uh, your settings are oh, yeah. alpha one, clockwise two, and reminder that the straw bolt two will engage the bearing arm onto the race ring. So alpha one, clockwise two. Happy. Right. And it'll be uh, bolt number two, the draw bolt. It's going to be 12 to 14 turns to torque. And if needed, you can push from behind. Okay, copy. Um, I've got alpha one, clockwise two, yep. having 12 to 14 turns. That's right. And just and then and say again. Yeah, 12 to 14 turns on draw bolt two. And bolt number. Bolt number two. Okay. And uh, you can push from behind if you need to. And just a reminder that slight side loads can torque out an Alpha 1 setting. So just to uh, be real careful. Okay, copy. Uh, I keep uh, my TV. Copy, see that? Okay, and then as I work out it down, you need me to uh, leave some slack. Checking. Yes, there does need to be some slack in the cable to allow for the panning and tilting. Copy.
And big picture for both of you, we're about three hours in. Uh, we are happy with the progress, uh, especially on that ever so important TBA. Um, just for your awareness, we've replanned the timeline to where we are going to go after the TBA bolts, but we are not going to um, do the procedure to bring it back in the airlock. Sorry for the wedge clamps I meant. Uh, and uh, so for big picture for the replan timeline, we are right on time and we're about three hours in, limited consumable, still battery EV2. Everyone copies. copy. Make two copies. As the crew members continue their tasks, the timeliners have reworked today's timeline. The RFG, the radio frequency group, will not be removed from its stanchion as was previously planned. However, it will be prepped for removal on a future spacewalk with some clamps being uh, removed. And Laurel, it might help if you put your end effector down on one of the adjacent handrails that you can kind of push against. I do call. Okay, and let me know when you've got a good view. And Jazz, if you That's go to your right uh, just a little bit, uh, then we can see the hook. That. We're talking about it, Jess. Yeah, so you can see it. All right, Jess, we are happy with the configuration for CP8, so you can go ahead and translate down and reconnect the uh, connector. Okay, coffee. Nice effort. We know that's a tough task with a lot of gray area. In this helmet camera view, Laurel O'Hara continues driving the three bolts that will secure the new trundle bearing assembly to this solar array rotary joint. Meanwhile, Jasmine Rogbelli is completing her uh, Ethernet cable tieback. She will remate a cable that was demated previously before moving on to her next task. Hey, Laura, we think another thing that may help um, is if you want to hand start that bolt, uh, if you want to hand start that bolt rather than trying to use the PGT, that might stabilize the, the whole package. Okay. And you may have to use one hand to push on the back and then one hand to hand start. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, and um, made it over center, no pad, no vent pins, good EMI band, and I'm just taking a look at this config. Uh, do you, let me back out a little, maybe you'll get a better view. Okay, we copy and we got the inspection and the made it over center, appreciate it. Okay, uh, 
Let me know when you've got a good view. And Jaws, we are happy with that configuration. Uh, we're going to do some checkouts here. You can uh, go down uh, to assist Laurel as needed uh, on the install. Okay, copy. Where did my bag go? Oh my. Didn't I sell my bag on thirty six eighty three? And uh the that's the one that was called out, uh, but if, I think you may have stowed a little bit more outboard toward Laurel's work site. And I've got on bolt two, um, count at 11 turns, got a good green light, work point four. Copy, bolt two, 11 turns, checking. And Jaws, I think you're kind of one block uh, zenith from where your bag is. If you go back toward face one uh, to 3681 and 3802, uh, you should find your crew lock bag. You're saying go, go back later. Yep, got back towards face one. Back toward where your uh, rich man's fair lead is. Okay, stand by. And Laura, we'll still talking about bolt two, stand by one. Okay. And Laurel, did you know um, how much hand start did you get before those 11 turns on the PGT? I actually, I didn't hand start it at all. Okay, copy. And for what it's worth, the PGT has uh, 12.3. Oh, that we don't use that, but. And for Laurel, we're going to hit it with one more turn. It's a little bit lower than expected. So on that Alpha 1 clockwise 2, um, go ahead and uh, uh, do bolt number two uh, to torque. Copy. And I'm back at 3681. Okay, copy, you're at 3681. Uh, I do not see my bag. Okay, we copy. Um, and if you move out a little bit toward uh, Laurel, um, so go out back toward 3866, just above where the uh, uh, large ORU bag is. For EV2, it is torquing out. I'm not getting an additional turn on it. Okay, copy. I'm just full on clockwise too. Okay, that's a good bolt to uh, Laurel. So we're going to move on to a handover. As noted, we are in a handover of the satellites and that allow us to communicate with video and audio to the space station. We'll regain that shortly. In the meantime, McBelly is uh, going to retrieve a crew lock bag before heading back to the airlock, stowing that. O'Hara continues installation of the trendle bearing assembly, where she previously removed the degraded one earlier today. 
It's been about three hours and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. Okay, copy. Do not see my bag. And Jaws, when you stowed it, was it close to the large ORU bag? We're wondering if maybe Laurel put it inside of the large ORU bag or if it got uh, stowed or tied up in there. And I, I thought I stowed it on 3683 by the camera. Okay, understand. Uh, we'll take a look at it for right now if you want to get in a good position um, to assist Laurel. And for Laurel, uh, you're looking okay. for Alpha 2 clockwise 2, and you're going to be driving bolt 1 to torque. And uh, note that if it doesn't bite on the first uh, kind of couple of turns, uh, you, you may need to use a hand behind the bolt. Uh, this has had some issues grabbing the first threads. Um, so if the, just try to see if the bolt is kind of free spitting or if it really bites on it. So again, bolt 1 to torque, Alpha 2 clockwise 2, you're expecting around six turns. We've got Alpha 2, clockwise piece set, expecting six turns on bolt one. Good read back, Laurel. Hey, Jess. Hey. Okay, Laurel, what can I help with? I'm just about to drive bolt one, and I think I'm going to be in a good position. Okay, so I'll just stay out of your way then. Yeah, give me one second to draw my mini architecture on the sector. I can just. Okay, I can take it. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. Hey, I'm on boat one driving. Copy. And we copy. Hey, I got about five and a half turns. Green light, torque 3.6. Okay, we copy. That is a good bolt. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is drive bolt three to torque, two to four turns. And that's also alpha one clockwise to bolt three. Okay, alpha one clockwise to bolt three. Good read back. Yeah, could you help me count turns on this one? Uh, yeah. I'm in a good position. Okay. Do I look straight on the bolt? You do not. Okay. Starting turn. Okay, copy. One. Okay. Um, that torques out, I think. In light. For 2.1. That was one turn. Copy one turn and we copy the torque. Uh, standby one. Between one and two turns. Copy. We're checking. Standby one.
Enterprise is up. We're still chatting about it. All right, uh, we're going to have you just um, check your body position, side loading, et cetera, and uh, uh, verify Alpha 1 clockwise 2, and we're going okay. to just reattempt and let us know if you get any turns. Okay, Alpha 1 clockwise 2 is set. And then, John, uh, you just want to back me up on if I'm straight on this bolt. Okay, copy. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, it is. I can't. Um, yep. Now you are. Hey, and it looks like my perspective. That looks good. And yeah, I'm not getting any additional turns and moving towards 2.3. Okay, we copy. Uh, checking. Okay, Laurel, uh, we're going to release it for a turn and then reattempt. So go ahead and set Bravo 1, counter 2, Bravo 1, counter 2, and you're going to release one turn on bolt 3. We copy. Bravo 1, counter 2, release 1 turn. Good read back. And uh, say again the bolt. And we're on bolt number 3. And which bolt? Bolt number 3. Okay, copy. That's what I thought. Just let it jump. Bolt number 3. You look good. Um, uh, there you go. One. There's one turn released. Copy, and we're going to set Alpha 1 clockwise 2 again, Alpha 1 clockwise 2, and we're going to drive that to torque. And we're hoping for two turns. Alpha 1. Hey, copy. Okay, now it looks good. Okay. One. I'm just doing one turn. Yeah. I see it. You're Four. straight on. Right, four. Okay, we copy. Okay, we're going to uh, increase the torque just a little bit. So uh, we're going to. Um, set alpha two clockwise two, alpha two clockwise two, and uh, go ahead and drive that and uh, open for one turn. Happy? Do you want me to? Are you? I uh, just need to adjust my TV real quick. Okay. Wait, just have two eyes on it. Okay, my TTV is set to three. Copy, JAWS TCV set to three. Okay, I've got eyes on. Okay. JAWS, are you close enough? Um, see those two French, the French hooks with the rets on them? Where are they? Right next to the bubble socket. 
be close enough to the, or even if you pull the TBA bag back a little bit, they should go with it. Okay. That's helpful, thanks. Sure. Um, okay, a little campus. Oh. How's that? Looks straight. Looks good. How's that look? Looks good. He's driving. Copy. Three and a half hours into today's spacewalk. I went up a little bit. Okay, ready? Yeah. Move like maybe an eighth of a turn. Yeah. Okay, we copy. Checking. Uh, green light 3.1 on the torque. Copy green and 3.1. Checking. O'Hara continues installation of the new trundle bearing assembly, now being assisted by Jasmine McBelly. This setup is similar to what we saw earlier, where McBelly is providing additional support to O'Hara as she drives these bolts using the pistol grip tool. The spacewalkers were informed earlier. I think you're on top of the TBA bed right now. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Um, just okay. Just uh, don't slide any pressure over here. Okay. All right, we're gonna, um, uh, to reset the torque, uh, we're gonna release this a turn and then uh, set it back at the lower torque. So if you could set your PGT to Bravo one counter two, Bravo one counter two, and you're gonna release bolt three, one turn. See, Bravo one counter two, one turn, bolt three. Looks good. One turn. One turn. Copy, and you can uh, go ahead and set the PGT to alpha one clockwise two, and we're gonna drive it back into torque. Have alpha one clockwise two. Looks good. Like that? Yeah. Due to some of the unexpected issues removing the trundle bearing assembly earlier, the crew will not be able to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, as previously planned. Copy one turn and 2.4. We're talking about it. However, they will remove some clamps on the uh, RFG itself. This will set it up for removal on a future spacewalk. All right, nicely done, ladies. Uh, we're gonna call that a good bolt, and we're gonna continue. Uh, so you can stow the PGT. I want you to verify that you have no grease on your gloves uh, and on the cable and the cap, uh, and we're gonna be doing NZGL ops. Got a little bit of grease um, on the um, outer part of my glove, nothing on my palm. 
Okay, copy. Um, if you can see have a view. Yeah, we do see that. Um, the important part for the NZGL ops is we don't want to get any grease, obviously, on the connections. Um, so at this time, you can transfer the RET from the bearing package onto the cap. I can, I can. And that's the cap on the, yep, the one you got in your hand, the one on the cable. Another satellite handover, but trundle bearing assembly or TBA install continues. O'Hara has completed driving the three bolts necessary to attach the TBA. Okay, uh, so you go to demate that Sarge NZGL twist cap from the inboard receptacle and stow it in the TBA bag spare. So we're going to get both those caps off and get a good inspection while we do so. A good view from the helmet camera of Laura O'Hara as she... Okay, hold your back or anything, Laura. Okay, good right now. Laurel now removing a twist cap, an NG, NZGL, which stands for NASA Zero Gravity Lever. The camera views of the bag uh, being at the Sarge work site. Um, so if you want to look around, uh, uh, we saw it earlier. Um, so if you want to kind of retrace your path uh, back to CP8 and kind of around that work site to see if you can get your eyes on Kulak Bag P. Okay, copy. Good news. Um, okay, so you want me to go do that now? Yep, um, I think Laurel's got the connections, and so we'll give a good, uh, uh, good effort to find that crew lock bag. Okay. And I have the twist cap off. Now that the work with the pistol grip tool is complete, O'Hara is removing these caps. And it's back in the spare bag. Okay. Spare bag. And uh, sorry, are both caps back in? Uh, nope, working on the second one. Copy. She will then mate one uh, NASA zero gravity lever to the solar array rotary joint. Yeah. After this work is complete, she will uh, reinstall the Sarge cover removed at the beginning of this spacewalk. Connections are working there. Both caps are back in the bag. 
Okay, copy. At this time, um, we'll take a good inspection on uh, the receptacle and the NZGL. And then we're going to mate the TBA NZGL to the SARGE receptacle on the inboard side. Okay, we have good turn with the EMI then no pod. The receptacle is still good. Going. Copy, you are go to mate. Copy. My tether is going between my feet again, so just going outboard a bit to try to clear that. Copy. And Jaws, as you're uh, um, retracing your steps, if you go up a little bit more towards CP8, um, we have a uh, kind of video of it earlier getting tacked down to a handrail that's up closer to CP8. So I'd retrace your steps back up that way. Okay, Kathy. Um, yeah, I, I think I've still got the tether, 50 tether wrapped around my legs. Okay, copy. Yeah, let's clear that first. Or behind my back, rather. The NZL is made at full forward over center. Copy. Uh, at this time, uh, we can perform a HECA survey of the TBA work site. And then we're going to be cleaning up our tools from there. Um, our next step, obviously, is going to be to install that cover the great view and just make sure we don't have any uh, extra tools or tethers um, down in that work site. And we're going to okay. stow things back in the ORU bag and you can report the inventory as you clean up. Um, don't stow anything inside of the degraded bag and if there's if something wasn't opened like crew lock bag T then we do not need to inventory it. Happy. Hi, Lucy. And Laurel, if you want to transfer your camera to you right now is a good time to do so. Happy. I will do that. Okay, and so I'm back at my rich man. And translating towards CP8. Copy. And I'm at CP8. And if you come a little bit ISS inboard and just kind of follow that handrail path, maybe along there. ISS inboard. Okay, I'm looking inboard. I don't see my bag. Copy. And we are also checking. 
Magbelia is working to locate her crew lock bag, which she will then take back to the airlock before picking up a new bag in the airlock and heading out to the next work site. We, I thought it was this handrail right here. Yeah, we do, and we're just looking at the video. Okay. Hey, Jaws, from where you are, just on the other side of CP8, there's a couple of handrails on the aft side of station that you can kind of reach if you just reach past CP8 right there and just double check on those. It's just on the other side. Happy. Yeah, you see one right there. And then there's one inboard as well. Just want to check both those. Negative. Start on this one or the one one inboard of this one. Okay, copy, Jaws. We can have you move uh, back down toward your uh, fair lead, and we'll have next steps for you in a minute. Copy. All right, so for EV2, I am reassembling my TDA bag, and I did not get into the tea bag. Okay. So that's still intact. My, cam my camera is now on my mini workstation, um, along with the red that it was on in the in the trunk in the auxiliary bag. Uh, the trash bag. Large trash bag is back in the CPA bag. Um, I have one a wipe on a ret. Um, I have one loose ret on the contingency ret. I have my gay little gay bag. Okay, we copy Laurel and the standby one for JAWS. I'm gonna have you pick up your adjustable fare lead and uh, we're gonna have you move in and start getting ready for the SSRMS setup. Okay, copy. And I'm going all the way back to the airlock, correct? And that is correct, yes. We're gonna go back and retrieve crew lock bag R. So uh, big picture, you're gonna be heading back in, picking up your green hook, uh, and then coming down the front of the lab. Uh, we're gonna do the adjustable fare lead there, um, and then go back to the airlock to get crew lock bag R.
and Laurel, as you're cleaning up, um, reminder that we'll want to know how many uh, used dry wipes are in your large trash bag, if any. Three hours and 50, five zero minutes into the EVA. Okay. Is that okay, or do you want it in the large trash bag? Nope, that is a, that's a good config. Copy. So as you get that buttoned up, uh, just let me know when you're in position to do the Sarge cover and I'll get steps for you there. Please. And for JAWS, as you uh, head back towards your green hook, uh, reminder, you're gonna head back inboard on the Zenith side of phase one, come down at uh, Bay 16 and inboard to the FHRC and we'll pick up our green hook there. Copy. Mogbelli is heading back to the airlock to retrieve the next crew lock bag that she'll use at the next work site. Meanwhile, Laurel O'Hara is continuing work at the Solar Array Rotary Joint. Okay, we copy. Um, so the next thing we'll do is uh, retrieve retrieving the cover. That's it. As you get the cover, just a reminder that these Fairchild fasteners are pretty touchy, so we want to minimize side loading. And what you're going to do is to uh, position Sarge Cover 2 into its original orientation with a two-bolt side inboard. And then you're going to drive one turn by hand on each of the cover bolts, four of them, uh, not the ones that are next to the tether point, but the other four. And you have uh, cuff page uh, six has all the details for the Sarge cover install. O'Hara continues to work at the Solar Array Rotary Joint location. She's installing the thermal cover that she removed earlier to also expose the trundle bearing assembly, which has also been removed and replaced. And hey, Laurel, uh, uh, before you get that cover on, um, kind of a fun question. There's a serial number on the mount package, and we were wondering if you could read that to us. Okay. I'm zero five six. Copy, we appreciate that. Uh, back to plan A, we can install that cover. Uh, one turn by hand on each of the bolts, uh, the four bolts that are not by the tether point. Please. Right, serial number. I'm sick. And as you get this on, we recommend you start uh, with 3A, which is the farthest one away from the tether point. in my way and drop my DRT again.
Okay, I've got my green hook back. Yeah. Okay, copy. And it is locked. Yes, good check. I was just about to say that. Um, so you can go inboard to the lab struts. Those are mile marker about 7680, and you're going to go a nader on the port side lab struts and then cross over starboard on that gap spanner, and you'll be looking for handrails uh, 252. Copy. Okay, going down the port strut. Copy, have you coming down the strut? Uh, and then we're going to cross over that gap spanner to 252, and you're going to be doing it a rich man's fair lead on 252. Copy, 252. Laura, are you doing okay? I'm good. On the right side of your screen, Laurel O'Hara works to uh, re secure the Sarge solar array rotary joint cover that was removed earlier to allow access for removal and replacement of the trundle bearing assembly, which has been successfully completed. Meanwhile, Jasmine McBelly is heading back to the airlock. She'll retrieve a new crew lock bag, essentially a tool bag. The next big task for these crew members is to start work on the RFG, that's the radio frequency group. Steve Bowen and Sultan al Nayadi had some trouble with this RFG earlier this year on a spacewalk. The crew members won't have time to fully remove the RFG today. However, they will uh, remove a couple of clamps that are attached and put it in a good configuration for removal on a future spacewalk. We're coming up on four hours since the start of the spacewalk this morning at 7.05 a.m. Central. Bravo. I went for a bolt of opportunity. Okay, bolt of opportunity, we'll take it. Oh, it's tricky to get my hand.
Two alpha times started as well. Copy, nicely done. So I will work on three alpha, three alpha and three bravo. Just over four hours into today's spacewalk. Again, that's starting at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Okay, and if you just look up and left, uh, we're just seeing your safety tether. Maybe that's your expected routing, but your safety tether kind of goes up above your head and then it's just kind of cut a little bit on the MLI on that strut. Um, so just make sure that's a good config. If I can, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that will release at the end of EVA when I head back. Like when I once I go outboard of that MLI. Yeah, we concur. Um, so you can uh, you can go ahead and take the gap spanner now down to um, the front side of ESP2 and around ESP2 back toward the airlock, just keeping in mind that uh, your tether is going to be pulling in a different direction than usual. Okay, hey, copy. Hey, big picture for both of you. Um, we're about four hours into the EVA. Uh, we're about 30 minutes down on the updated timeline. Um, but just for awareness, um, because we're not going to be bringing the RSG back in, we're going to forgo ARM operations for today. We are going to have you access the backside of the RFG, and we're going to work those wedge clamps, um, but we're not going to set up the APFR to do so. Copy. Okay, copy. And uh, which one of these? Oh, and they were both both, three, both of these bolts were engaged earlier. Yes, we believe so. Actually, we think that three alpha was not engaged initially. Okay, that's. Are we trying to re-engage it, or am I just going for three Bravo? If we can uh, engage all of them, uh, that's great. Uh, if you are not able to access that, then uh, that's okay too. Okay. I can. Uh, I, I'm not sure. If three. If 
can push the bolt just kind of all the way down into the hole. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can do that with all of them. Okay. No, that makes sense. And we're talking about it right now um, to get the steps for the PGT. Um, just as you know, these bolts are kind of touching. So the concern is kind of stripping them or breaking them with any side loading on the bolts if we don't already have the first thread in. Um, so that's why the uh, why we've got these hand turns first. Um, but stand by one and we'll, uh, I'll get you the uh, words for PGT. I, I feel like especially with three Bravo, there's this piece of MLI right here. So it's hard to come straight in and not put side loads on the bolts with my hand, you know, with the size of my glove. It copy, and that may be the issue why 3-alpha wasn't done in the first place, so we've rediscovered <laughs> MLI problems. Yeah, there's the lip, uh, the lip on the cover frame for both of them, and then MLI for Bravo. Like, it was easy to get the, get to a 2B. Okay, copy. We understand you've got a hand start on 2A and 2B, and that not yet on 3A and 3B. I think that 1A, 1 Alpha, 1 and Bravo will be similarly challenging as Alpha and 3 Bravo. We're talking about it, Laurel. Okay, Laurel, uh, we can switch to the PGT at this time. Um, so you can get your PGT. We're gonna go alpha one, clockwise two. Um, and again, uh, very touchy bolts. So if you could uh, make sure that we're putting downward pressure on them, uh, no side loads. And we really wanna make sure that that bolt is in the receptacle uh, prior to turns. I copy. Laurel O'Hara continues work reattaching the solar array rotary joint uh, cover that she removed earlier to access the trundle bearing assembly. That assembly has been successfully removed and replaced. Additionally, Mogbelli earlier removed the H fixture that will allow for a future uh, International Space Station rollout solar array installation. Mogbelli also completed the uh, Ethernet cable untwisting task on the onion pin and around the off side of SP2. Copy, great view. And you guys are just about to come down the uh, west coast of the U.S. Copy. And say again, settings, I've got alpha one. Affirmative, uh, alpha one, clockwise two, and we're only gonna go for the four, uh, not the ones by the tether point quite yet. So 3A, 3B, 2A, 2B. See? And you're gonna drive two turns, exactly two turns. 
And Laurel, just to clarify, you're going to do exactly two turns on the ones that you were able to hand start, and you're going to go three turns exactly on the ones that you were not. Okay, copy. Uh, do, you think it, uh, do you think it would be helpful to do those two turns on the two I was able to hand start first? Just to help align the other ones, or is it better to have some play? These fasteners. And uh, yeah, the going after the ones that you did not hand start uh, may be advantageous. And Jaws, we see you back at the airlock. Okay. And I'm good to open thermal cover. You're good to open the thermal cover. That'd be interesting, the airlock. This view from Jasmine Mobelli's helmet camera as she has made it back into the airlock. She's going to be retrieving uh, the crew lock bag you see there at the top left before moving out to the next work site. The next work site will be the RFG release. The crew members will not be removing the RFG entirely today. That stands for radio frequency group, but will be preparing it for removal on a future spacewalk. Retrieving crew lock bag R. Um, and you're going to keep the large, small ret on the crew lock bag. Copy. I'm not getting any engagement in these bolts. Okay, copy. I wonder if the socket is too is the socket too deep to, so that it's not applying any downward force on the bolt. The spring loaded. Copy, and you may need to just push on the cover as well because the cover is probably going to pull that bolt back a little bit. And you may need your end effector to react against. Okay. Yeah. And you may be able to use your end effector on that tether point of the adjacent one if you want to be kind of right next to it. Okay. Disregard that suggestion. Uh, but there is the handrail right there. Okay. Okay, copy. Yeah, that is, it's where I want my end effector. 
Uh, hopefully it's not interfered. Challenge with the PVC is it getting in close enough that I can push the cover down? Yeah, Kathy, I don't know if uh, going body up uh, may help um, to try to be able to pull against the uh, seat of handrail uh, while pushing the PGT. Well, I can push the PGT. Um, were you saying I to push the cover down as well? Yeah, if we need it, we're just wondering if the kind of the memory on the cover is preventing the bolt from getting close to the threads. Yeah. Got it. What do you think about trying the two alpha, two bravo? And we are good with that. Just a reminder, two turns. Copy. Hand over. As heard called to the crew, we're in another satellite handover and we'll regain video and audio communications with the space station shortly. Laurel O'Hara continues to re, uh, reinstall the solar array rotary joint cover that was removed earlier today. We're now four hours and 16 minutes into the spacewalk. McBelly has made her way back to the airlock to retrieve a crew lock bag for the next task. Copy. Two turns on two Bravo. And these aren't, this isn't the final turns, right? Yeah, oh, that's it. correct. Just the two turns. Okay. All right, let's see. And so at this time, uh, just for big picture, we need uh, three turns on three bolts in order for it to be, uh, be able to remove that tether. And so um, we can try to uh, hand start or PGT start uh, any of the other four uh, for a total of three turns. Even one, Alpha, or Bravo? Yes, or if you can access those around the tether, then yes, you can try those. Okay. And the uh, thermal cover is closed. The uh, RFG bag is on my... Copy. Right side is down. Copy right side down. We'll also take a glove and a half when you're done with the left side check. Copy. Okay, left side is down. 
Kathy, and I have 11 and a half, please. Up is dry. I try moving my BRT. Copy and I'm going heads up like you suggested. Do you want gloves or just? Copy gloves. Uh, at this time, you can translate back to the ESP2 uh, worksite. Um, reminder that you've got the uh, setup. ESP2 setup steps, uh, there are going to be some variation uh, since we're not using the arm, but those should be obvious. Um, so we're going to translate starboard around ESP2, and we're going to tack that uh, crew lock bag down on handrail 8007. Copy. 8007. As you heard from Ground IV and McLean, speaking with O'Hara and McBelly. Just after the RFG. The crew will not be using the cannon arm two today uh, to assist them in the RFG removal. That's radio frequency group. And again, due to the difficulties that uh, were experienced today, the crew members won't remove the RFG entirely, but instead will prepare it for removal on a future spacewalk. Yeah, she felt safe to each other. And I will try to say cater of both of them. Copy. for 8007 on the port side. And that's on the starboard side. It should be just after the RFG. Oh, sorry. Starboard is what I meant. Thank you. You were going to the right place. Yeah. Not a bad translation without the uh, full NBL structure in the way, huh? Yeah, it's definitely better. Okay, I'm at 8,007. And Laurel, uh, Jaws is in a good breakout position. We want to know your opinion on whether it's uh, you think it'd be helpful to get these remainder bolts with both of you working on it. Um, I don't think so. My feeling. Um, it's just, I mean, one person could hold the panel down, I guess, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much how, how much leverage they could get on it while someone's also in there with the PG or even just their hands. 
Okay, we I got think me. I'm in a better position now to have one hand, one hand on the PC. Okay. Uh, let us know how that one works, uh, just for your awareness. So, uh, we've got your heck off again. Okay, copy. All right, for JAWS, um, if you'd want to retrieve the large small RET from that crew lock bag, and you can connect the small hook uh, to the inner stanchion of the out starboard most spare joint fram handrail, uh, just one of those uh, handrails that's in between the RFG and just aft of it. Uh, um, the small hook goes to that handrail, the large to 8007, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The the large or the small hook on the on the stanchion, and then the large hook can stay on eight zero zero seven. That's what we're going to use once we pull the MLI back. That copy and my TCV is set to four. Copy EV one TCV four. Okay, I got one alpha driven two turns, the PTC. Copy one alpha has two turns. I'm gonna go for one Bravo. And I have one Bravo driven with two turns. Okay, copy, nice work. Thanks. Nice job, Laurel. Yeah, very nice job, Laurel. Um, do you think that uh, we'd like to give the old college try on the threes again, uh, if you think you can get in a good potty position for those? Okay. And for Jaws, in case uh, you get done with that tether and we're um, talking, your next step after that is going to be to release the quarter turn fasteners. There's a total of 10 on them around the uh, RFG. Let's copy. Okay, the uh, RFG bag is stowed on 8007. Secure. Copy. And it's just a, a temp stow, so I don't need to really tack it down or. Yeah, but that's a, it's a temp stow location because we actually move it to another location if we were going to do the RFG remove. Um, we'll probably, uh, we may leave it there uh, for now, so however you think it's secure. Okay, copy. Okay, and it looks like I was able to start um, three Bravo. We are going to start engraving the trophy down three here. Alpha seems to just. <laughs> just I don't know about that. <laughs> wow. Then we also have the one that I loosened on cover three. Yes, we are tracking that one. Um, how many turns did you get on the hand start? That one? I haven't done anything with the cover three one alpha. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, sorry, one Bravo. And then the other. For three Bravo, I'd put two turns with the PTC. 
Okay, three Bravo. You got two turns with the PGT. So we got two turns on the ones and the three Bravo. Uh, three Alpha, we have no turns on, and we have a total of three turns on the twos. Correct. And Anne, I'm not sure why, but there, I, I thought there should be another adjustable on the outside of this deck, um, but there's just one integral, so it's uh, stowed by that. Okay, yeah, that's a good config for the temp stow. Okay, copy. Okay, and this uh, small hook is coming over to the... Uh, the joint is next to the RFG. Okay, copy. For Laurel, um, if you could try two turns with the PGT on three alpha. Okay, I try, I did, but I can try. And say again, last uh, Laurel. One field, right. Uh, I did, I did try two turns on three alpha, um, but I can try again if you like. No, we don't need to retry it. Um, so we'll go on to the uh, final torquing. Okay. Um, so we're going to access the uh, the ones first. So the ones closest to the tether point. Uh, and you you are go to release your tether. And we're going to drive. Okay, I can keep. I'll just keep driving. And I'll get the tether. That's okay. Sure. As long as it's not in your way. Um, so we got Alpha One clockwise two, and we're going to drive to torque on the ones. Hey, copy. I've got Alpha One clockwise two set, and I'm driving to torque. Good read back. Just over four hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Laurel O'Hara reinstalling the Solar Array rotary joint cover. Okay, I put five turns on Alpha One. Green light for 2.4. Copy 2.4. This view from helmet camera of Jasmine McBelly, who is at the RFG, the radio frequency group, and working to remove some fasteners. Again, we won't be removing the entire RFG today as was planned. However, they will put it into a good configuration for future removal. We copy all. Those are good bolts for 1A and B. Um, so uh, again, same PGT setting, alpha one, clockwise two, and you're gonna drive to torque, uh, three alpha, three bravo, two alpha, two bravo. Okay, we didn't start three alpha, so I'm gonna do same, Wait, could you repeat that? Yep, and uh, Laurel, sorry, I was just double checking that. So your alpha one, clockwise two, uh, you do not need to worry about bolt three alpha, uh, the one that we couldn't get hand started, but we will hit the cover three bolt um, with that same alpha one, clockwise two. Okay, copy. And Jaws, nice work on the quarter turn fasteners. We see you making your way around there. Um, that was, I came off, I think it was four turns, um, but it, not, it may have been three turns. 
but I got 2.3 torque and a green light. Okay, copy, and what bolt was that? That was 3 Bravo. 3 Bravo, copy. And are we still uh, moving the adjustable from the MLI to the clamshell? Or are we foregoing that? Checking. And yeah, Jazz, we are going to move that adjustable so that we can get the MLI open. Um, so you'll, uh, it, it should be looped through on the clamshell so you can release the equipment hook from the MLI tent and put it on the clamshell handhold strap and cinch it down. Okay, copy. Just trying to make sure I. The right thing. Okay, it looks like this one. Yeah, so the expected config is that it's looped around the, the clamshell handholds and attached to itself, and then the hook is on the MLI tent. So we're looking at that hook that's on the MLI tent. We'll remove and put it on the other clamshell one where the wire tie is. And real quick, am I go to drive to Alpha and to Bravo? A yes, you are, and we're also going to do the Alpha One Clockwise Two on the uh, on the Cover Three bolt. So yes, you are go for Two A and Two B. Ray, about three and a half turns, light two point four torque. We copy. As we wait to regain communications from video on the International Space Station, this is the International Space Station flight control room in Houston, Texas. And Merrill, did you say that was a 2.3 torque? Confirm. Okay, good bolts. Uh, nice work. Um, so if we can go for the bolt on cover three. Okay, copy bolt on cover 30. And is that the torque, or do you want me to put the initial two turns on it? Checking. And you can go ahead and uh, drive it to torque, Laurel. Uh, seven turns, point three torque. Copy. Thank you. That leads us in a great config out there. Um, really great work on that cover, Laurel. Um, you got some happy people down here. Uh, so at this time, we can uh, stow your PGT. I think you did move the base of the RET, so we'll transfer that RET back onto your swing arm. And you'll be picking up okay. the ORU bag and then just doing a nice good scan to make sure we didn't... Uh, uh, leave any tools or tethers out there. And we would also love a glove and hat check from you, Laurel. Okay. I'll start my PGT and then take it.
Give me two nominal gloves and a dry hat. Copy. Thank you for keeping me out of trouble, Laurel. <laughs> Okay, and just uh, so you're aware, so the dressable equipment tether is, it's disconnected from the MOI, but I think I need to attach it when I go around the other side. Okay, we understand. And uh, Judge, if, it, if it's easier, you can rotate that clamshell. And if you remember, one of the things that we were going to do is kind of uh, fit check for the snugness on that. Um, and so if you do end up rotating it, uh, we'd love your words on that for awareness for next time. Okay, copy. Okay, six quarter turn fastener is done so far. Copy. And now eight. Copy, eight quarter turn fasteners. Right. Uh, I have that right back on my mini workstation where it started. And I think next I'm ready to pick up my barely for my safety tether. We concur. And then pick up the trundle bearing bag. Yep, that's correct. We're going to get the uh, large ORU bag on your uh on your BRT, and then you've got the, we're counting the one fair lead, and then before you get back to your green hook. Copy. Okay, and all 10 quarter turn fasteners have been released. Happy that you have all of the quarter turn fasteners released and were you able to reattach that adjustable? No, I'm going to get it when I go back around. Okay, I got you. Um, so our next steps are going to be to remove that MLI tent from the SASA. And so you'll get, um, from whatever angle uh, you can, it kind of opens like a book to the aft side. This view from McBelly's helmet camera as she works to remove the MLI or multi-layer insulation cover from the RFG. You also heard McLean reference the SASA, that's the S-band antenna sub-assembly. And Jaws, as you're uh, accessing the RFG, this will be our first look at that Z93 paint. If you have any uh, words on the condition of it, or if you see any flaking, just let us know. Okay, copy. I'll take a good look. So far, it looks pretty good. Copy. Now at four hours and 45 minutes into the spacewalk, O'Hara has completed the trundle bearing assembly removal 
lubrication and replacement and has reinstalled the solar array rotary joint thermal cover. She'll now move to help McBelly on this uh, radio frequency group work. Again, two crew members, uh, Steve Bowen and Sultan Alniati, worked to remove this earlier this year, but ran into some unexpected issues. The crew today will not be able to remove it either, but are putting it in a good configuration for removal on a future spacewalk. Some words for uh, both of you while you're um, working your those steps. Uh, JAWS CP8, we just got a good check out on it. Uh, the pan and tilt is working. We're not seeing any of the uh, problematic areas that we did before. Um, so nice work on the cable. Awesome, good Nice job. Laurel, for you, big picture. Um, the steps that JAWS is working through um, are, are mostly one person tasks and so for your next steps, we're going to have you take that large ORU bag all the way back to the airlock and then stow it inside the airlock and get the bolt puller on okay. the way. And also on the way, we're going to have you do the CETA uh, brake handle get ahead. Okay, copy. As was shared with the crew members, uh, the tasks that Jasmine Mobelli is working on right now don't require a second set of hands. Therefore, Laura O'Hara is going to move to working on a get ahead task. Wire tie is still fully installed on the clamshell. It is. Good news. That's a great view.
As McBelly works to prepare the RFG for removal on a future spacewalk, O'Hara is moving to the starboard portion of the International Space Station to work on the CETA or Crew Equipment in Translation Aid cart. She's going to be reconfiguring a brake handle at that location. the TBA bag on my ERT. Okay, copy, Laurel. Um, one good last look at the work site, make sure everything's picked up and you're go to translate inboard and retrieve your green hook below the FHRC at mile marker 9180. Copy. Work site looks good and clear. Picking up my waist tether, translating inboard. Copy. We're in another satellite handover and we'll regain communications with the space station shortly. At my green foot location. Copy, and we just came out of a handover, but um, I think I copied Laurel saying you have your green hook. I am, I do. Okay, you're going to translate inboard to the uh, CETA brake handle location. This is the uh, starboard CETA cart on the portinator brake handle. I'll pop. And I said I just I just got my green location. I'm now picking up my green. Okay, copy, Laurel. Thanks. I've got my green hose back on my red reel. Okay, we understand you have a green hook and we do have video back. But I see you at 3651. The AMAT adjustable is now tight around the clamshell as well. Okay, copy, Jaws. So you can work that uh, MLI um, back and reminder, it kind of moves to the back and then we're going to roll it and then use the large hook 
and there are some soft tether points that are just inside the bolted side of the MLI on the RFG, and that large hook uh, from 8007 goes over the MLI and can kind of tack it down. Okay, copy. Laurel, so you go inboard. Um, reminder, as you go past the port CETA cart, that we'd like you to depress the uh, CETA brake handles a couple of times on the port CETA cart as you make your way to the starboard one. Happy. And sorry, just to clarify, that's the brake release pedals, not the handles. And 7890 Laurel is about where you'll start running into Port Cedar Cart. Okay, I'm at the Port Cedar Cart. Copy, you can just depress the uh, brake release pedals twice and continue inboard to the starboard Cedar Cart. Copy. All right, I'm at the starboard seat of cart. Okay, copy you're at the starboard seat of cart. Um, so just to orient you to the work site, um, on the Nader port, port. Nader port, uh, Nader port brake handle, you'll see is bent over at a 90 degree angle ish. Yep, I'm here and I see it. All right. And I, th I think it is about exactly 90. Yep, so we're going to straighten it, slide the collar over. It. You're going to straighten it, then slide the collar over the joint, and then you're going to rotate that collar to engage the pin in the jig groove.
All right, and All then right. we'll just point that break toward the MT. That took just a little less time than the TBA. Okay, and that's pointed towards the MT. That can you can do you have a heck of view or any camera view? We can, and pointed, that's uh, like, we are. Uh, it's still below the cedar rail, but pointed towards. The Yep, and that's a great config, Laurel. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, and that's uh well I attended that. Okay, Jaws, and we hear that the, the MLI is tended back. Yeah, it's from view of a view. Okay, and do you have a good view of the aft side of the RFG where those wedge clamps are? Stand by one. Copy, and for Laurel, you're heading back uh, to the airlock, picking up the bolt pullers that are on the toolbox uh, on the way. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at the, I can see four of them clearly, the center one is hard to see. Okay, and what we're looking for, we'd like an inspection um, on the status of RTV on those wedge, wedge clamp nuts. Sorry to pull them a lot back for the nuts, correct? And yes, there's an MLI that goes around the mounting plate. Uh, EV1, I'm just on the far side of the seat cart now. I'm going to get my uh, bag, TBA bag into a really better configuration. I start heading major. Okay, we got me. Now over five hours into today's spacewalk. Jasmine Mbelli, whose camera view you have on the left, and uh, you can see there, is wearing the red stripes as EV-1 today, continues work on the RFG, the radio frequency group. It was planned to be removed in this spacewalk. However, the uh, spacewalkers will configure it for removal on a future EVA. Meanwhile, NASA's Laurel O'Hara has completed a get-ahead task on a crew equipment and translation aid cart. My waist tether, being back under the cart. Copy. Additionally, today the crew has removed and replaced the trundle bearing assembly. Uh, and I don't know if you've got a good heck of you, but I would say it's probably the overestimate case of RTV. Okay, yeah, we don't have a good view uh, uh, just because it's night. It's a little bit dark, but uh, if you can do photos, if there's some flash on there, um, and any descriptive words, uh, we will definitely take. Happy.
Okay, and I'll say about uh, one centimeter depth of RTV on each one, and you know, just fully, fully white. Okay, copy, Johns. Um, we are going to uh, have you try. Can you guys tell me about? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. Uh, I can hold for a second. Okay, I was just going to um, let Jaws know we are going to have you try to remove some of that RTV. Uh, so if you want to go to the crew lock bag R and pick up the EVA needle nose pliers. Okay, I'll just get some photos first. Asmund Belly yeah, is at it, the. Uh, if it's doable, you can get both the needle nose pliers and the dyno cutters. Um, otherwise, we think maybe the needle nose pliers may be sufficient. Happy. McBelly is now at the RFG, the radio frequency group. Again, we were looking to remove this today. However, she is going to start that process by removing some RTV. This is a liquid silicone rubber that solidifies at room temperature. Another snarl as I'm coming down the seat. Big back. Yeah. Okay, copy Here. Oh, and it looks like mine on that same MLI. Again. I'm going to head, continue heading. Copy, Laurel. And we did uh, we did know when uh, when Jaws tacked down her safety tether on two five two on the top of the lab, there was a loop of uh, safety tether on some MLI on one of the struts, and that might be what you're seeing too. Um. Yeah. There's an open. Uh, Uh, TA plant that it was snagged on. Wake up. You. And for those needle nose pliers, you just want them on me? Yes, you can just throw them on your MWS. And track. Okay, and I, and I might go to start trying to remove this or? Yeah, so for the words, we think if you use the meaty part of the pliers instead of the end, then hopefully it'll come off in kind of a bigger chunk and you want to have your trash bag ready to place any remnants in. Okay, copy. Okay, and confirm, I'm still, this plan is still for me to sew this TBA bag. Idea Lux? Yes, you'll be picking up the dyno cutters and, uh, or the, sorry, the bolt pullers that are on that um, toolbox, and we're going to stow both the large ORU bag and the bolt pullers back in the airlock. Okay, copy.
And there's actually, there's no reason I need to transfer this to, to me, right? I can leave it on the to go right. Yeah, Joe, that's no problem. If they can reach and stay tethered to the bag, that's fine. Okay, copy. On the right side of your screen is Laurel O'Hara's camera view. She has moved back to the airlock. She'll be stowing a bag there and picking up some new tools. Jasmine McBelly is going to be starting the RTV removal. That's room temperature vulcanizing. It is the liquid silicone rubber that solidifies at room temperature. And removing this RTV should make it easier to uh, remove the entire radio frequency group on a future spacewalk. Hello, I see you. Okay, can you see my tether pack? Step by one. Um, yeah, it's up. I see it. Yeah, it's going. It's going behind your legs and right under your foot. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I think if I go straight down to the airlock, though, I can clear that. Um, stand by. I actually don't have a good view right now. Um, uh, so, because it's hot on your, the back of your foot. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to be able to twist to get rid of it. I don't think so. I'm, um, I mean, if you can get your legs under it, yeah. All right, so the bolt cutters are on and adjustable, and I am ready to do one of the D-rings on the adjustable, and so I'm just going to release one of the hooks. Copy, we concur. And I will just send it down to the airlock. For both of your awareness, uh, we're about one minute from a handout, and we're sitting uh, just over five hours of PET. Um, hard to determine ahead and behind since we're kind of in uh, different procedures, and we're talking about what we'll do uh, for the remainder of the time, but the limiting consumable is still EV2 battery. Happy. And Jazz, if you need to lock out that rent so you don't get the, the pull on the tools, you can. Five hours and 15 minutes into today's spacewalk.
And we're back with you both uh, after the handover. We don't have the video yet, um, but we're tracking uh, Jaws working the RTV and Laurel getting back to the airlock to stow the tools. For big picture for you all, um, we have about uh, 40 to 45 minutes um, uh, to work with the RFG. So Laurel, when you stow um, those items in the, uh, in the airlock, we'll have you go and assist Jaws over at the RFG. And what we'd like to do is get as much data as we can. If we can get the RTV removed, that's a win. If we can uh, get the uh, RFG wrench um, and the ratchet wrench out and uh, try to undo uh, some of the bolts, um, that would also be a win. So any of the data we can gather uh, about the RFG task would be great. Copy. Okay, I'm back at the airlock and ready to open the thermal cover. You are going to open the thermal cover. O'Hara is back at the airlock. She will stow an orbital replacement unit bag inside before moving to the RFG, the radio frequency group, where McBelly is currently working. And you said to use the uh, thicker part? Yeah, what we're thinking about uh, when we tried this on the ground was that if you use kind of the thicker part of the of the uh, um, needle nose pliers instead of the end, that it's more likely to come off in one big chunk rather than a bunch of little pieces. Okay, uh, it's pretty hard to have my trash bag out and uh, I'm like pretty nervous about my TTT uh, hitting the load in here. And Jaws, uh, can you just give us a status? Have you been able to pull any of the RTV off? No, I've, I've tried on a couple, but nothing has come off. Okay, we copy.
Laurel, are you, are you still at the airlock? Yes. Copy. The trundle bag is in the airlock. And I'm going to, I'm dropping the bolt cutters off here as well, right? That's correct. The bolt pullers will stay uh, in the airlock. Uh, but speaking of cutters, speaking of cutters for jaws, we think that maybe if you try the uh, dido cutters, um, we may have a little better luck on the RTV. Yeah, and when I tried the dino cutters uh, in uh, during OSB the other day, it was really hard to get a grip at all on them and have any sort of accuracy. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to get in a better body positioning here. Copy. And if you have any recommendations, just hard to get uh, in a position where I'm not hitting. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you can't get to the okay. perfect uh, to spot, any any words that you have that can help us develop this one for the next time, uh, we'll definitely take. Whether there's a tool you wish you had or a body position that you wish you could get into. I mean, I do think if I, you know, were in the arm and more stable, it would uh, potentially be possible. But right now, I think. Even if I drop a CRT, I'm afraid I'm going to hit this low gain antenna. Okay, we copy. Um, so I'm kind of wedged between this, you know, the width extender and the high gain. And then I mean, if I sell my trash bag, at least it's not sticking out. But then I have nowhere to put the RTV. Copy, and Laurel's just getting out of the airlock, and I'll be over there in a minute if uh, if she could assist in either doing the cutters um, or holding a trash bag. Okay, copy. And do you have a good view now on the Micah? We do. It's not quite the angle that gives us a good well, uh, insight onto the RTV and the bolts. Okay. Right now. Yeah, we're looking, Jess. Okay, hey, Jess, uh, we're thinking that We'd like to see if we can fit check the RFG wrench. Um, so that is in the Kulak bag, and especially on that uh, middle one, uh, that's a little bit of a challenge to access. We're wondering if you could uh, get the RFG wrench out of the Kulak bag and give us a good fit check on that middle bolt. Copy. Yeah, let me just try one more time with the RTV from this location. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have my trash bag up. Okay, EV2, I've got the bolt pullers. Out in the airlock. Copy. And on one of the UIA, half UIA ring. Um, I need to figure out this snarl, tether snarl before I think, before I head that way, I think. 
um, unless there's a clean way for me to clear it en route. Oh, Jazz, I might need you yeah. need to come up? I might. Okay. Bye. Okay, Laura, uh, I can see, I think if you rotate, uh -huh, do you yaw to your left, left, okay, and just yaw all the way around, happy. I was thinking it might be easy to do in here. Okay, I see your tether coming up, now you should see it off your left. I think it's crossing. See it now? Right by the, uh, it's just come out the airlock. Yep, good. You look good. Okay, thanks. That? Okay, and so I'll grab the RT wrench. And I'm not, I'm still not seeing it in a good, you're not? Hang on. What? Got my green tether reel right in front of me. Yeah, I see it off your left side, under your BRT, your, your tether pack. Is, is it trapped in my BRT or? Um, okay. Towards your head, like a uh, roll. Right. Oh, oh yeah, okay. It's if you bring your like left arm. Yeah, it's a, it's under your BRT. So, um, okay. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. Right. Okay. That'll clear it. And basically just keep doing that. So it comes. Okay, now you see it? On your left side? Clear? Um, yeah, but it should be on my right side. Uh, yeah, it's coming in front of your body and under your BRT, that's all. So, okay. So, uh, Laurel, it may, uh, from this view, but for Laurel, it may give you a little bit of space if you want to translate a little bit away from your anchors. Uh, we see the um, thermal cover closed. Okay. Um, we're just going to be cleaning up from here. Um, Laurel, or Jaws is uh, not too far behind you, and as you translate away, you might be able to clean that up a little bit. It may also help if you undo your BRT from its stowed position. Um, but uh, Jaws, yeah. if you want to um, translate over and help her clear that, um, we're, but big picture, what we're going to be doing is uh, just cleaning up the MLI on the RFG, and then we're going to be uh, picking up the fair lead on top of the lab and then ingressing. Copy. Okay, copy. <sighs> I see, yeah, Rob, yeah, if you un unstill your BRT, Laurel, okay, and pull it, you know, like kind of up and forward, okay? I, sorry, I can't see now that you've rotated. it. So if you come back to the...
if you do that, I... I think you'll be able to see it. Oh, yeah, I see it. It was caught in my BRT. Okay, yeah, it's clear now. Oh, I think I need to undo my BRT. Thanks. I think I can, I've got it from here, though. Okay, copy. And, and can you say one more time? Uh, do you want me to try an RFD wrench before I pack this bag? No, we're uh, we're just going to pack up that bag, but we would like to ask you for a couple of photos um, of that aft part of the RFD before you put the MLI back on, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll get everything back into the crew lock bag, and then we'll kind of undo everything we did with the MLI, um, tacking those quarter turn fasteners back down, moving the AET, and then we'll be heading back in. Okay, copy. All right, and EV2 is back in a good config. Excellent, Laurel. Nicely done. Uh, so Happy if you well. want to assist with the uh, um, RFG cleanup and getting the MLI uh, back over, uh, you're welcome to translate out to the Nader side of ESP2. Copy. Yep, so just uh, for next steps, JAWS will have you take a few of those pictures. Um, we don't need an inventory of the bag. We just like a visual confirmation that all the tools are stowed back in the bag. And then uh, Laura will have you uh, and JAWS both do the MLI on the RFG, uh, reset that to a good position. And then Laurel can take the crew lock bag back to the airlock and JAWS can go pick up her adjustable on the top of the lab and uh, head back to the airlock. Copy. Copy. I have arrived at our seat. Copy. Jaws, I'm just at your head. What's up? I said I'm just at your head. Oh, okay, I see you. So what would be helpful to do? Um, are you able to go through that gap? Uh, yes, I think so. You go that way and start working the MLI. Are you going to get photos from where you are? I need to get farther away. Uh, I could take some photos here. In this view, Jasmine Mogbelli EV1 is up toward the top of the screen with the red stripe on her spacesuit. Just a reminder to reinstall that mounting plate MLI before the uh, larger MLI. Copy. Laurel O'Hara, who is EV2 today, is down toward the middle of the screen wearing no stripes on her suit. Both crew members are now at the RFG, the radio frequency group. Tell the chief 
calling me back that way. And correction to my last, after the photos, you do not need to install that uh, mounting plate to MLI, just the uh, large tent. Okay, copy. I got some far out photos. Copy. The crew members will soon begin wrapping up for the day, now five hours and 37 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, I will head between uh, the SSR and the elbow. Uh, chair C, what you're thinking? Yeah. And I'll uh, release this large small. And if the adjustable needs to go back on to the MLI. Yeah, affirmative. So that uh, where you took it off of the MLI tent, uh, we'll have that hook go back to the MLI and cinch it down. Okay, copy. Guys, I think it's a little, well, it was. Oh, that translation? I got it. So uh, my safety tether is going under it. Hang on, man, it's way too late and so. Uh, Jazz, I think this is a tight translation path. I'm going to come around. Okay, cut the way, the nominal way, like for the, for have me going for the procedure. Yeah, that sounds good. Now move this way. Way doable. And Laurel, when you get a chance, uh, I did, forgot to ask you when you egress the airlock to do a safer handle check. We can see your left one is down, but if you can do a right safer handle check for us, please. Down. Copy, good check, thanks.
Okay. Um, you want to work your way around the other side and I can work. Follow you on these. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm just going to try to get one on so it's big. But... Oh, let me grab my tether. Okay, I'm around the training pin. Coming up on five hours and 45 minutes into today's spacewalk, which started at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Jasmine McBelly is reinstalling some multi-layer insulation covering over the RFG. That's the radio frequency group. The crew members are essentially wrapping up their tasks for today and will begin starting to move toward the airlock soon. Okay, two of the four we're doing on this side. Hey, copy. Let me get these three. I got two on this side. Copy. Not like. Do they turn all the way? So, yeah, they just turn quarter turn. You've got to get it right in the middle.
Now this is it's tricky. Yeah. Okay, start it, but not actually all the way to quarter. Now I'm underneath. And Laurel, from your current position, you may have a target of opportunity in front of you to do the AET repositioning that's on the side of the uh, clamshell. Um, it's kind of off your left shoulder right now. Copy. Nice work on those quarter turn fasteners. That's a, uh, a an exciting task at the end of a long EVA, uh, but you guys are doing great. Yeah, I've got one more. Three. I've done three total. Um, and I might. My com cap or my the headband is starting to slide over my eyes. Okay. Are you still good? You can still see? I can still see. Okay, you may be able to kind of push it up by moving your putting your back on the back of the helmet. That's what I'm doing. Okay, for Laurel, uh, we'd like you to pick up the crew lock bag that's by your yeah. right hand, and uh, you can start heading back toward the airlock. Copy. And if you have any issues uh, seeing or if it falls over your eyes a little bit more, we want you to put out down a local wherever you are. Copy. Laurel, our, um, sorry, Josh. No, no, it's okay, just what's the status on that side? Uh, there are uh, two done and one is still just in line. Which one, the one on your right side or your left? The or one center? the car that's on my right. Okay, copy. All right, I'll see you back at the airlock, Laurel. Okay. Okay, on the three, uh, which side am I on right now? The three on this side are done, Ann. Okay, we copy. Um, so the AET moving up by your right hand, uh, we see you getting the Velcro there. Okay, yeah, the AET I'll do from the other side. Okay, and can you confirm you got that large small red that we used to tie back the MLI? The large, just the large end is released. I did not get the small. I have not retrieved it yet. Okay, so that small end is still on the frame handrail. Yes, that's correct. Unless Laurel got it, which I don't believe she did. Okay, um, we'll probably have you pick that up, uh, Jaws, as Laurel's picking up that crew lock bag. Okay, copy. Jasmine Mugbelli continues to secure the multi-layer insulation on the RFG. Laurel O'Hara is picking up a crew lock bag down at the bottom of your screen. 
Once she picks that bag up, she'll start heading into the airlock. And Laurel, if you see that headband getting worse at all, um, then just let us know and we'll go direct back to the airlock and, uh, and just get the crew lock bag. Okay, copy. I've, I've got the crew lock bag now. Okay, nice work. And it is a short translation if you want to just leave it tended to you, um, your choice. Okay, I will do that. Have my local picked up. Copy. Found the onion bearing. And we are in an expected satellite handover. The International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles above the Pacific Ocean. Dan? And we are back with you after the handover. Okay, copy. Um, purchasing the the adjustable equipment tether is back on the uh, MLI loop. Copy, nicely done. And so we just need to pick up that large small ret from the handrail and then uh, give a good work site survey, make sure we haven't left any tools or tethers out anywhere. And, and there's still, I believe there's still three quarter turn fasteners, so two, two of the four on this side. Which I'm working on right now. There's one. Almost. Okay, we copy. Good catch. And then that one on the, the starboard side that Laurel had a hard time with. Met the airlock. Copy. Copy, Laurel. And we just got video back. So for Laurel, as you get to the airlock, you'll open up the hatch thermal cover and ingress and attach your waist tether to the airlock D-ring extender. And you can stow that crew lock bag in the airlock. Okay. Then the plan for me is to stay in there. That is correct. And Giles will be joining you here in just a few minutes. Okay, copy. Okay, and those two are done. Okay, we copy, Jones. And Laurel, as you go in, you may want to tuck your PGT a little bit tighter to the right side of your body um, to get in through the, the hatch. Copy. The others here. And it may be easier to do on the way in uh, to get a waist tether on the airlock D ring extender, and we'll need gate closed, hooks locked. And uh, well, that's uh, the 
small quarter turn fastener that you were not able to get, that's the one closest to where it uh, touches, right? I remember that one being tough to get off. Yes. Is it partially engaged? Um, it is not. Right, right waist tether on the D-ring. Okay, and confirm my hook and hook lock. Okay, right, close lock. Copy. Black on black. We see that you are go to ingress and pull that crew lock bag in for Jaws. If we can't get that last quarter turn fastener, um, just do us a favor and make sure that there's no gaps in the MLI or holes, uh, letting some sunlight in, and we are go to leave that one unfastened. Okay, copy. And I'm just going to stay put here and not move. Copy, Laurel. Copy, Laurel. The beautiful blue Pacific Ocean below Jasmine Mogbelli here as she works on the RFG, the radio frequency group. I thought I could go through this way, but I think I'll have to go back around. Okay, and we do not need all of those uh, fasteners, uh, but you just need to grab that large small that should be right next to your right hand. Yeah, I've got the large small. You want me to go back around and check on the quarter turn fastener? Well, do you know, was the MLI pretty tight, like uh, on the side I was working on? Yeah, were there any gaps by where that quarter turn fastener was? Uh, no, it was it was tight. That's what it, it was. That's what was making it difficult to turn the quarter turn fastener because you couldn't pull it tight enough. Yeah, you, know, you needed to need a little bit more slack in it to get the quarter turn fastener centered in the hole. Okay, and let me know if you're good with that or if you want me to go back around. And we are good with that, uh, Jaws. Uh, thanks for the good check on that. Uh, so you can pick up the large small, and then we'll have you uh, trace your path back to lab handrail 252. Okay, and I've already got the large small. Copy. Your go to translate back. Six hours since the spacewalk started today at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Jasmine Mugbelli is heading back to the airlock to reunite with Laurel O'Hara already inside as they prepare for uh, final ingress and repressurization. I'm translating up the up center on the lab. Copy, we see you. Your only other task after you pick up uh, your adjustable is to come up the lab struts. You'll come across face one, and when you're on the starboard seat of cart, we're going to have you depress those brake handles. The brake handle releases, and uh, and then before you head back to the airlock. Okay, copy. Okay, I'm back at my uh, adjustable. Uh, 
And um, I see that crew lock bag outside. Still? Uh, well, you're, it's the crew lock bag I picked up. I thought it followed me in here. Oh, um, but it's outside the airlock. And Laurel, we can have okay, Jazz well, push that in when she gets there. Push that in too. Okay. As Nugbelli heads back to the airlock, a recap of what was accomplished on today's spacewalk. Nugbelli started by removing the H fixture in preparation. Just retrieving uh, my adjustable equipment tether from the fairies. Nugbelli started today by removing an H fixture, which will allow for future installation of an IROSA or a rollout solar array. Meanwhile, O'Hara removed a trundle bearing assembly. The team encountered uh, some difficulties and Nugbelli was able to assist in that task. O'Hara then uh, placed lubricant around the solar array rotary joint before installing a new trundle bearing assembly. The solar array rotary joints help turn the solar arrays to the sun to gather power for the space station. McBelly also reconfigured an ethernet cable to bring it closer to the station structure and ground teams confirmed they're not seeing any issues they'd previously been experiencing when moving a camera in that area. O'Hara completed a get ahead of reconfiguring the starboard crew, trip, starboard crew equipment translation aid cart brake handle the crew then turned their focus to the radio frequency group. It was not fully removed as planned, but surveying that area has put it in a good configuration and helps the team better understand what can be done to remove it on a future spacewalk. And Laurel, just for awareness, um, are you able to see all of the UIA switches, buttons, and lights? I am. Copy, good news, thanks. Just a precarious position where the, either the headband or I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but where the com cap is just sitting kind of on top of my eyes. Okay, copy. Um, yeah, so we'll preserve above, uh, above my above my eyes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we we copy. Um, so we'll just have you stay as still as possible as long as you can see the UA switches. That was our biggest question, and uh, Giles will be back. Uh, she's just leaving the lab now, so she should be back your way in a minute. Copy. Thank you. Trying to get this uh, 
large, small rat out of my way. Okay, I'm leaving the lab. Peace. Okay, I'm coming under the MT. Oh, I came up. Copy. I'm up the wrong step. Got some great views of you. Copy. And as you come to the uh, CETA cart uh, for the brake pedals, two pumps a day keeps the myrrh away. Thank you. Oh. Okay, coming down. Later. Copy. on the toolboxes. Copy, as you come down to the airlock, thermal cover's already open, uh, so we'll make sure that that crew lock bag gets tended back up into the airlock, and then we'll go through the uh, safety tether swap. Copy. And we don't need to do any disconnections or anything on the bag, just making sure that it's uh, in and out of your way. Okay, copy. Okay, I've got a local down, and Laurel, the back's coming to you. Hey, copy. All right, for Jaws, uh, uh, we have a good safety or a waste tether check for Laurel, and so you can uh, ret to EV2's anchor hook on the forward external D ring and release it. Copy. And you're going to be hooking that anchor hook to your waist tether and ensuring that the gates close, sliders lock. Copy. Okay, I can see my waist tether is closed, hook lock, lock on black on my D-ring extender. Copy.
Okay, that is to my left waist tether. Copy, and we'll want those uh, gates closed, sliders locked. Huh? Okay, gate closed, slider locked on both. Oops. Copy, you can release your ret from the hook, and then you can release your own anchor from the aft external D-ring and stow it and ingress. Up Okay, mine is released. Okay, well, are you ready for me to come in? I am ready. Um, I've got eyes on, there's one through lock bag, it's a hatchway, which I'm sure you can see. And then the TVA bag is kind of in the same place it was when we left. Okay, I'm coming in feet first. Right, okay. and do you see your feet? I feel your feet. Looking good. Okay, I see your waist ring. Been hitting. Let me tuck in. He is tucked in. And I get the thermal cover. Yep, good call. Good. As you ingress, we'll uh, close uh, that thermal cover, and uh, whenever you have a free hand, you can turn off your HECA. Happy. As McBully prepares to close the thermal cover, if you look down to the bottom left if of the you screen. The thermal cover, you'll release the hook from the stowage tether point and attach it to the magnetic plate D-ring and cinch until six lines visible. Okay. And the uh, more, let's see. This thermal cover being closed right now is not the airlock hatch itself. That opens inward. We had a view for a moment from uh, Jasmine Mobili's helmet camera. Once this thermal cover is secured, I get my Hecka. Copy, and we'll uh, just make sure the hook is off. Copy, and we'll just make sure the magnet is engaged, and then uh, release the hook and move it over to the plate magnetic plate D ring. Copy. Do I need to take my HECA off? And, and Laurel, yes, we will uh, have you push your HECA off as well. With the airlock thermal cover closed. Putting it to the right thing, so. Oh, this comes in. There we go. That's like, where did it go? The crew members have been informed they can turn off their helmet cameras. And then cinch until six lines visible. And we are in a satellite handover. We'll regain that comm shortly. Both crew members are now inside the airlock. The spacewalk is not officially complete until repressurization begins. A little bit? Yeah. Uh, is there a tip I push it a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Sure. And I'm going to push it a little further so I can get lower. Okay. Okay, yeah, I've got it on, but it's twisted, so let me fix that. Okay, copy.
as Laurel and Jasmine uh, work their way through procedures in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Uh, ISA astronaut Andy Mogensen and JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa will begin working in the equipment lock portion. One, two, three, four, five, six sharpies. The magnetic plate doesn't really... Oh, there it goes. Now it's engaged. Okay, for both of you, you can remove your SCUs from the stowage pouch, remove your DCM cover and Velcro to the DCM, and connect your SCUs. Laurel, if, uh, if this motion is going to cause the headband to kind of block your okay. view, then just let us know, please. Happy. Laurel, I'm going to need to get further port. Okay, thank Let me get this on. And Jaws, this is where sometimes hooking your end effector to that internal uh, handrail and kind of holding yourself port is sometimes helpful. Okay, in work right now. Thank you. I'm not sure what my are hitting. And for Laurel, if you wouldn't mind pushing your HECA button one more time for us. That. And EB2, I have my FT active jobs. What do you need? Um, I don't, what are my, uh, I'm not sure what my feet are hitting. And do you see my pouch? Oh, there Does your feet are hitting the uh, ceiling or the top of the uh, airlock, kulak. Good copy. And that communication coming from inside the space station, Andy Mogensen now back in touch with the crew. And then right now you're on the uh, umbilical the SCU. Yeah, I know. I'm just I need to get more ports. And I'm sure you've got the um, uh, laurels uh, umbilical between your legs. Okay, that's not convenient. Uh, okay, if I go back to starboard. Able to clear that. Can you see it, Laurel? I can't. Bring your left foot, can you bring your left foot down? Back of the knee and pull it back. It's the left one. Now, okay. you've, now you've trapped it between your two feet. Well, well, are you able to push those bags a little so I can see? Oh, um. Okay, Andy, so I've got my left leg bent. If you can pull your left leg down towards you, bend the knee and pull it towards you, you can all, and, and try to put the, and, Back at the same time. It's just on your toes now. Like that? I think so. I can't really see, but now you might have you might have resolved it. Almost. Andy, is there anything I can do? Uh, I no, it's I... kind of hard to see, but I, I think I think there's enough slack that if you just walk back your if you just walk your feet back. I think you'll be okay. I mean, it'll um, be between your I'm legs, hitting, but it shouldn't be the big deal. I'm hitting something that maybe your flip or I don't know, might be my. Can you rotate towards the and the other way, like against the wall? How about that? You're hitting her place. That's what you're hitting. Her, your left foot is uh, kicking her the, bo the bottom of her place. Any better? Uh, okay, I'm going to kind of, you know, think. So, can you pull your feet down towards the uh, yeah. hatch? Yep, how about that? I'm just going to see if I can get the, I just, the problem is I'm trying to undo the velcro to get this out. Looks like my foot is under an umbilical.
Are you going to have enough move, room to move around to do the hat shots, though? I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. work this first. Okay. You can pull the bags out, yeah. it helps, yeah. That helps. Yeah, thank you. And just for awareness, when uh, Jaws, when you get the SCU connected, uh, just because of backflow, Laurel, you may get an O2 use high message. Okay, my SCU is on and locked. Okay, copy. A uh, reminder that uh, to in you could increase cooling on the TCV to a higher number to minimize the risk of fogging. And you can switch your water off. Copy it. Off OFF forward, water off. I'm going to adjust my TCV first. My water is off. Was, and was that Laurel for water off? Water is off for Laurel. Copy. Okay, my TCV is set to six, and water is coming off. Water's off. Okay, copy EV1 and EV2 have water off OFF, and we're gonna hold here for two minutes. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a quick second to tell you guys, really nice job on the EVA today. The highest priority task was completed. We haven't done checkout yet, but we'll update you when we do. We got the H fixture, we got the CP8 complete with a good checkout, we got a get ahead, and we got a lot of good info uh, for the RFG. Congratulations to you both uh, on, the, uh, on your first EVAs. And most importantly, you and the whole team here safely executed a complex and international mission at the edge of what humans are capable of. Nicely done. Thanks, Anne. Um, I'd like to also thank the entire RFG Retrieval Part 2 uh, EVA team, uh, both on the ground and uh, our crew members on board who helped prepare us. Uh, I'd also like to, um, to say that, you know, leading up to today and today is a reminder that space is pretty hard and difficult and there were a lot of things we needed to adjust to, but the team uh, flexed very well, uh, yet remained steady and grounded, and we appreciate that. And uh, I'd also like to thank my uh, my friends and family. This is a very special moment for me, going out on my first space walk with a kid friend and someone I really look up to, Laurel. Uh, so thank you for giving me this, and thank you to my friends and family. Uh, I be really believe it takes a village, and I've got a strong village. Uh, Sam, thanks for taking care of everything back home. And Zelda and Estelle, Mommy loves you, and I hope this is a reminder that uh, dreams can become reality. And Laurel, I know uh, you'd like to say a few words as well. Those are awesome words, Josh. Thanks, Laurel. Um, and I feel the same way about this space walk with you. And I just wanted to add my own huge thank you to everyone that helped prepare us for today, and not just for today, but um, all the way since we were at SCANS uh, starting in 2017. Um, just to all of our systems and task instructors who uh, we owe all of our knowledge to the suit engineers to ensure we have a safe suit. Uh, to all the MBL divers and MBL staff who have you know, us in some of our best and also some of our <laughs> toughest moments in our astronaut careers. And of course, the instrument team and the EVA team uh, for putting all the pieces of the puzzle today to make this happen. Um, you were all with us here every moment of today, and we really appreciate it. Um, it's a great honor to get to represent you up here and to get to be a part of this team. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity and grateful for all the support. And I'm um, grateful to my family and friends as well for all the support they've had, especially my sister Caroline and Zena, who have I've leaned on more heavily than most in the last two years.
Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you all. And um, yeah, we really appreciate it. All right, lots of smiles around the room. Thank you to you both. Uh, at this time, Jaws, you can verify that the outer hatch is clear of hardware. And verify. Copy, I still need to get into a better position. Okay, copy. We're now coming up on six hours and 30 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, we did just hear that the port charge yeah, uh, successfully drove. So nicely done to both of you guys. All right. Okay. Um, I can verify that it's clear of hardware. Happy verify the hatch handle is per the hatch decal. <laughs> And I still have something keeping me from going as a Zenith. At Zenith? Yeah, I need to get my head up so I can get the hatch, but uh, you know the stuff that's below me so I can move my legs later? Yep, stand by. How's that? Not getting better. Uh, I, think you're also, uh, I think you're also on me in some ways because. Yeah, is that pulling you? Yeah. Don't know if it's my SCU or. or yeah, because I cannot get in the position right now. Any easier, I think if my foot would. How far port is my are my legs? Andy, can you are you Andy or are you still at the hatch? Yep. I mean, you can come further. I think your places might be um, hitting each other at the bottom. So, Laurel, if you try to rotate. Uh, which way? And for me to rotate. Down and then look forward. Station, look station forward. So look to your right. Oh. Sure. Then try to pull yourself as close to the wall as possible. Jaws, if you roll to your right, then you should deconflict. You will de deconflict your places. Okay, copy. Let me get this. We're about to have a handover. See you on the other side. Copy. And a handover right on time. The crew now at six hours and 32 minutes. Uh, the spacewalk clock continues to count as repressurization of the airlock hasn't begun just yet, but we heard some fantastic words from Ground IV and McLean mentioning that indeed this was a complex spacewalk and uh, McBelly and O'Hara reflecting on their time outside as well as some special shout outs at home. You mean roll to my right this way? Yeah, roll to your right. Uh, yeah, like that. Oh, but I, I'm still hitting something. You need to get your head. Um, I, oh, there we go. I can start. Whatever I was on, I'm cleared up. Okay. Okay, it's in the black region. Okay, so when you're ready, Jaws, when you can verify that that hatch uh, handle position is per the decal, uh, you're going to close and lock the hatch. That is per the decal.
and the uh, card has floated in there. A clear view of your seat now. Um, okay, the hatch is closed. I just need to close and lock it. Copy, understand the hatch is closed and locking isn't work. Okay, and just the head. Okay, what did you say, Will? Oh, no, you're good. Keep going. Your place is just kind of right at my knees right now, so a heads up. Copy. It is flat, now just working on the lock. Good. And you may need to wiggle the handle a little bit in order to get that lock, Jazz. Okay, thanks. My factor back down. I can go ahead and give you um, oxygenium when two valves are open. Okay, copy, thanks. And there's no set position it needs to be in, and this is just a pull down, push down, correct? Yeah, and you, you may need to push it down, so it's got to be kind of perfectly aligned, and so you may have to kind of wiggle that handle and push down on the lock. As hatch closure steps continue in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, this is a view inside the equipment lock portion. On the left is NASA uh, is JAXA or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut, astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. With the black alignment marker on the decal. Oh, even for the last. Okay, that, so that one, I see. Yeah, the little black one. Okay, it is locked. Okay, we understand. Closed and locked. Hatch closed and locked. Uh, so, Ed, Laurel already confirmed the oxygen hey, and EMU one and two valves are open. So, Laurel, you can switch uh, power EV1 and two to on ON and verify the LEDs are on ON and volts between 18 and 19. Okay, EV1 EV is on, standby. I mean, EV2 is one and now EV. 
Two and EV1 are both on. Copy. Uh, check that the uh, LEDs, two of them are on, and the power volts are between 18 and 19. Uh, both LEDs are on, and volts are both 18.6. Copy at this time on your DCMs. You can both switch your powers to SCU and expect a warning tone. Is SCU? Copy EV1 is SCU. It's wrong. Here's SCU. SCU. Okay, understand both EV1 and EV2 are to SCU. At this time, I'll hand you over to Andy for the rest of the repress. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Ann. Well, hey, Andy. Hey, Joel and Laurel, welcome back. So we are going to begin Kulak repress. Uh, first, a warning, if you're on SOP, Leave your O2 actuator in EV, but I don't think either of you are on SOP. Uh, no. So on your DCM, take your O2 actuator to press and verify on your DCM that it says O2 actuator in press. Mine is off. Okay, we're okay. EV1O2 is press. Have you verified on the DCM? Hey, it says O2 pause press. Excellent. Work. And Jaws, you can check that the EV hatch MPEV is closed. It is closed. Copy. Yeah, I'm impressed. Copy, Lowell, you're in press, and uh, can you verify on your TCM that it displays press? Hey, firm. It's O2. Say again? Uh, a firm. Have a good display. Copy. So we are ready to repress. I will crack the um, hatch equalization valve here and go slowly and let you know if uh, I need to stop at any time, okay? Okay. Copy. Andy Mogensen, ESA astronaut in the center of the screen, now leading the crew members through the repressurization process. Standing by for repress to begin. And with repressurization beginning at 1.47 p.m. Central Time and the spacewalk starting at 7.05 a.m. Central Time today, that leads us to a six-hour and 42-minute spacewalk, the first for Mogbelli and O'Hara. As repressurization continues, uh, we will recap what 
today's uh, spacewalk entailed. As Ground Ivy and McLean said, a very complex spacewalk and a lot of great work accomplished. Mogbelly completed removal of the H fixture in preparation for future installation of an IROSA, that's an International Space Station Rollout Solar Array. Meanwhile, O'Hara removed a trundle bearing assembly, lubricated the area on the solar array rotary joint, and installed a new trundle bearing assembly. The ground has since confirmed that to be a successful replacement, and the hardware is working properly. Mobelli reconfigured an Ethernet cable. The ground also confirmed that they are not seeing any issues they'd previously been experiencing when moving a camera in that area. And O'Hara was able to complete a get ahead task, reconfiguring the starboard crew equipment translation aid. And at 5 PSI, I will stop uh, repress and we'll uh, do a lead check. I'm showing uh, air leg pressure one decimal two. I think there was just a time from it cycling back and forth. Hey. We're at 3 PSI. Copy. Copy. Four PSI. I got the town. Okay. 
One of the tasks slated for today's spacewalk was the removal of the RFG, a radio frequency group. Uh, it was previously attempted on a spacewalk earlier this year, and the teams ran into some trouble. Uh, that was not removed today. However, the site was inspected, and the teams here on the ground have a better understanding for what can be attempted for removal on a future spacewalk. Okay, we're going to wait two minutes for the Kulak pressure to stabilize, and then we'll um, check the pressure over a minute. Copy. Copy. Repressurization continues in the crew lock now uh, at about five pounds per square inch, five PSI. Again, we're bringing that up to 14.7 to make it equal with uh, what we experience here on Earth and with the rest of the International Space Station. As repress continues, Let's take a look at some of the statistics from today's spacewalk. It started at 7.05 a.m. Central and ended at 1.47 p.m., meaning it was a six hour and 42 minute spacewalk. It is the 269th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It's the 12th spacewalk from the space station this year and the second for Expedition 70. Total spacewalk time for Expedition 70 with one Roscosmos spacewalk and one U.S. is 14 hours and 23 minutes total. It's the first spacewalk for both O'Hara and Mobelli. Again, total time of 6 hours and 42 minutes. And the total spacewalk time for all 269 spacewalks in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades is 1,710 hours and 49 minutes. That's equal to about 71 days, 14 hours, and 23 minutes of spacewalking time. The crew continues to step through the repressurization process. We will remain on air until both crew members are back inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. They're safe first. That simplified aid for EVA rescue. Of course, we didn't see that used today. Those will be doffed or removed, and we will stay um, in on air until their helmets are removed today. All right, we show a good leak check. Um, check that your love feeders are off, OFF. Love feeders are off. Damn. Check your gloves for contamination and report to Houston. Uh, no contamination for EV2, just the grease uh, that we've already talked about. And EV1 has uh, actually less scuff marks than earlier it seems and nothing else. Houston copies. Come out. <laughs> Copy. So warning if cuff one symptom symptoms resolving upon repress report as cuff two to ensure proper DCS treatment. If 
any DCS, leave O2 actuator and press to maintain hot air suit pressure. All right, so you can take your O2 actuator to IV now. Is IV verified on the display? Another satellite handover with the space station. And as you can see, teams in the room are preparing for handover as well. The team leading the spacewalk today uh, has been the Orbit 2 team. And again, as mentioned, this is staffed 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So the Orbit 3 team will uh, come and replace this team to get some well-deserved rest. O'Hara and McBelly are still in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock as that repressurization continues. Again, a six hour, 42 minute spacewalk today, the first for both of them. Yeah, you're just testing it. I know. Not sliding this. Yeah. yeah. The press, yeah, it's pressed, and then I've got it. It's like staying kind of down, you know, yeah. engaged to slide, but then it's not sliding. Me. Uh, I wonder if I can. This might be a cheese. Okay, can you come down towards me? Can you roll to your right so I can get past your BRT? Okay, back down towards me, I mean. Okay, right there. Okay, is that that move? This is your display say. Question mark. Okay, if you can just keep pushing it to the left. Yeah, I think it's between us uh, and IV. Uh, Hey, yeah, you're oh. Are you is your if, if you put your can you put your BRT down for it's just you'd have to roll so I can get to it. I don't know if you can. Okay. Now I can't see so I'm doing it blind. I can sort of what? Can you see? Um now, here, move your hand for a second. Here, here. 
about that? Okay, is that okay. an IV? Uh, EV2 is an IV. All right, copy. I will continue the repress uh, slowly. Copy. So ready to crack the equalization valve if you are. Ready, ready. After holding at five pounds per square inch, five PSI pressure uh, to accommodate some routine leak checks, the repressurization has begun. We're at 8 PSI, and once uh, we reach, uh, or once uh, DPDT is about zero, then you can expect an alert tone. Happy.
Det er fint, Sarah. The airlock now over 10 PSI as it works its way back up to about 14.7 to uh, equate with the rest of the space station. Also, the uh, percentage we're used to here on Earth. Again, today's spacewalk, six hours and 42 minutes. Happy 12. Now over 13.6 pounds per square inch as repressurization of the crew lock continues. All right, I think uh, we've equalized. We'll start uh, preparing to open the hatch. Okay, copy. With repressurization of the crew lock complete, Mogensen will prepare to open the hatch that separates the crew and the crew and equipment lock portions of the Quest airlock. And just as Mogensen and Furukawa assisted the crew in getting suited up this morning, they will assist the crew in doffing or removing their suits as well.
and the hatch is now open between the crew and equipment lock. That's NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara being helped back into the equipment lock portion first. As O'Hara and Mugbelli are helped out of their suits, another recap of the tasks accomplished today, a complex spacewalk. First off, Mugbelli removed the... ...would be appreciated. Satoshi, that's in work. First today, Magbelli completed removal of the H fixture, which allows for future installation of an IROSA solar array. That's a rollout solar array. Meanwhile, O'Hara worked to remove a trundle bearing assembly, then lubricate the area before re or before installing a new trundle bearing assembly. This is on the solar array rotary joint that helped rotate the uh, solar arrays to keep track with the sun. McBelly reconfigured an Ethernet cable, and the ground teams confirmed that was successful, and they have no uh, conflicts with a camera that is in that area. O'Hara also completed a get-ahead, reconfiguring the starboard crew equipment translation aid, also known as the CETA cart, working on a brake handle in that area. Ground teams also confirmed that the trundle bearing assembly O'Hara installed today is working as planned. The crew moved on to work on the radio frequency group, but did not have enough time to remove it as was previously planned. But the teams on the ground now have a better understanding of the configuration of that area and will make plans for a future spacewalk.
Shaw's and Laurel Houston. You are no longer hot, Mike. Welcome back and congratulations. Both crew members are back in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. Andy Mogensen in the center of the screen. He is current ISS commander and uh, assisting with the suit doffing today. Again, today's spacewalk, six hours and 42 minutes. The first spacewalk for both O'Hara and Mobelli. Houston airlock, PCV position above three. Houston copies.
Again, both crew members, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine McBelly, completing their first spacewalk today in six hours and 42 minutes, both back in the airlock and preparing for their helmets to be removed. Receiving some assistance from JAXA's Satoshi Furukawa and ESA's Andy Mogensen. Airlock Houston on one for photo request. Ready on one. Hey Satoshi, we have a request for photos of Laurel's headband. So if you could uh, take a few for us, we'd appreciate it. Be in work. Closer to the end of the spacewalk, Laurel O'Hara's headband started to slide down a little bit. Teams will uh, photograph that for preparation for any future spacewalks.
with Mug Belly's helmet and gloves removed, we are just standing by for Laurel O'Hara's uh, helmet to be removed. Again, these two These two crew members having completed their first spacewalk, totaling at 6 hours and 42 minutes. And with both crew members, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mobelli, back inside the International Space Station's Quest airlock and their helmets removed, we are going to wrap up our coverage for today. Again, today's spacewalk for these two, it was both of their first venture outside the hatch, totaled at 6 hours and 42 minutes. A successful spacewalk accomplishing some very complex tasks for the International Space Station. And we look forward to the next opportunity to see the work done outside the hatch. This is Mission Control Houston.